where, where you come down on, on how we're coming into 20 and where we may go. Well, one thing I do want to say, uh, Russia is the number one performing market this year. Mm. Think about that. Energy and a central bank that lowered rates. So we have a central bank globally that have been lowering rates. That's helped. We don't expect them to raise rates next year. We expect actually Fed funds futures are showing a rate cut next year. However, we're going to see bouts of profit taking. There's no doubt about it. The market is at 19 times forward earnings. Something is going to come along. It could come up with a number of scenarios. There'll be profit taking. However, I think that'll put more money to work. One of the things that fueled this market, this rally, was cash. We always look at how much cash was on the sidelines. It came in. Where's the cash going to come from for the next move up in, in January? I think you're going to see selling in certain sectors moving into other sectors. We would be hedging a bit. Uh, you see utilities down. You see REITs down, treasuries. Those are the ones that will probably be attractive if, that, if you can't go options, if you can't you know, buy puts. You'll start seeing money going into those to hedge your portfolio. There will be profit taking. There's no doubt in my mind. You know why? There always is. Yeah, come, come the, t the turn of the year. Yeah. Brian, Morgan, in the crux of our conversation a few minutes ago, mentioned those who think we're in you know, mid-cycle versus yeah. late cycle. That's you. <laughs> she was talking squarely yeah. about you. Uh, well, yes, that's right. And I think part of it is, uh, I mean, kind of twofold. Number one, uh, late cycle seems to be the new mid cycle, right? I mean, uh, a lot of people have been saying we've been late cycle for years now, and uh, the economy and the markets have proven to be much more resilient than what I think people give it credit for. Uh, the second factor is that it's not a cycle, uh, right? I mean, there, it used to be that uh, from an economic perspective that you'd oftentimes have like the credit cycle, the consumer cycle, and the business cycle kind of synchronized as far as uh, leading to conditions of a uh, little bit of excesses that needed to be corrected with recessions. And if you look at the data over the last maybe 10 to 20 years, you'll notice that those um, sub-cycles, so the consumer cycle, credit cycle, and business cycle, they're not really all that well synced up. And I think that's one of the reasons why we've had rather subdued growth that hasn't really created the, the excess conditions that need correcting. Uh, in fact, I, you know, a lot of 2019 was a year of the collapsing of the yield curve, the inversion of the yield curve, fears of recession. And 2020 is likely going to be a year in which we're going to see uh, the slope of the yield curve increase and perhaps a lot of those recessionary fears begin to fade, which is one of the reasons why sentiment might be you know, somewhat elevated, but it can continue to go higher. And that's why my team, we're really positioned um, more biased towards risk assets, that is equities over fixed income, preferring uh, you know, commodity currencies over, say, uh, the U.S. currency. And so a lot of it is, uh, even though you, uh, it feels like it might be more late cycle, it's not much of a cycle. 